Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be going over the challenge, A Link to the Chain. A Link to the Chain challenge is the second challenge in the Garden of Salvation raid, and we're going to quickly go over it. All right, so this challenge actually is a challenge this week, unlike last week. Wow. But big, big surprise. Wow. So basically this challenge in a nutshell is to get all six people tethered together. Basically what that means is all six people have to connect at the same time to tethers. Now this doesn't have to be the same exact tether, it can be separate ones. And we'll go over basically the game plan here. On the first time when you first start the encounter, what my team did was we all connected together at once. And then once we did that, we split up into three groups of two. Now if you know how this encounter normally goes, the splitting up into three groups of two is normal, but the beginning part is not normal. You got home right here, right? Cool. Home. Yes. All right. We're going to call that home base or home plate. Cool. You got first base right over here. You got second base at the top across from home. You got third base over here to the left from home. Cool. And then that connects. Cool. You got two little tiny teleporters over here and over here. You got over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. These all connect these two, right? So what you want to do is start the encounter, obviously with six people here. Then you want to split these two, go over here to the right. You want your two of your people from home originally to go to the right. You want two people to go to the left. Cool. So now you have two and two. Yes, perfect. This is art. We're making it happen. Let's go, everybody. Cool. So now that these two have moved over to here at one and to here at three or third base and first base, what you want to do is clear as ads as fast as possible. Remember, home is your shot callers, of course. So they're going to do their thing. And what you want to be doing is making sure that you are connecting when they call out three, two, one. You want to shoot your little beacon and connect the tether to the thing in the middle and same with the people on three. Now, here's where it gets weird. After you connect here at the same time, and you'll know if you failed the challenge, says challenge failed. You're going to send one player up here and one player up here. These players will meet at the top. They'll meet together. They'll clear the ads as fast as possible. And then the same thing will apply, except those two, the player, one player from here, one player from here, have moved all the way up to the point now where they are going to forever be connecting to here. You need to send one player from home plate to third and one player from home plate to first. That way they can connect at first and then connect at third. That leaves two over here, two over here, and two over here. I hope that made sense. I hope that helped. Let's draw a smiley face in the middle. That's a terrible smile. Can we redo that smile? That is terrible. Okay, let's do another smiley face in the middle. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Give him pupils. Okay, now he looks terrifying. Give him a nose and a mustache to help. Yay. All right, I hope that helped. Home base was basically the shot callers here. They were telling us what their timer was and when they wanted us to link. What we would do then is do a countdown from three to one, and then we would shoot it, making sure that we're spaced out so that the line can connect from the box to another player to the beacon itself. The reason why you want to do this is because these tethers can be somewhat connection based and also because you want to make Make sure that all of them link up at the same time because if they don't these tethers are the reason why you might fail a challenge now you do have a margin of error of about one second or two seconds but it's just very very helpful to do it this way another thing that i think would be very very helpful for this challenge to note is that every single time it says the defenses have subsided you have exactly 10 seconds to rebuff so every single time it says the defenses have subsided you and your team want to make sure that you are lining up so that there are three groups of two all grabbing the buff at the same time that's what we did and it made things so much easier now as far as the hydras go this is also important for that as well because right when it says the defenses have subsided that's when you have your 10 seconds that's when everybody needs to get back to their positions and immediately retether after that it will say the fences have been deployed and by that point you need to kill the hydra 
monsters as fast as possible kill all the shielded ads as fast as possible if you are at home base at this point what you need to be doing is moving from home plate to first base and to third base and same thing goes for second base if you are at second base you want to constantly be moving to either third or first it's just that simple you just need to be moving around the baseball diamond but don't go two bases too far you only want to go one base in reach of each other i hope this baseball analogy as stupid as it sounds is making somewhat of sense i i i, I hope so once you have cleared all four hydras, you're going to go to the middle and once again you need to connect the tether. You just want to give everybody a countdown right after you kill hydra and every time it says defenses have subsided that you want to connect this tether again. Now finally, if I had some tips to go into this encounter, they would be pretty simple. Now. There are mods that you can get from this raid, and one especially great mod is Enhanced Resistant Tether. This mod is from the raid itself, you can get regular Resistant Tether as well, but Enhanced Resistant Tether will give you even more of an effect. You gain a powerful damage resistance while part of a Tether chain. Multiple copies of this mod do stack as well. Now these are only on arc pieces of gear from the raid. And I know this is very niche and not everybody is going to use this, but this is very, very helpful for this challenge. More likely than not, you're going to be getting shot by the adds, and it's very nice to have that strong damage resistance while you are in the tether. It just makes the quality of life a lot better, man, and that's what we're here to do. Now, the next thing that I would also heavily recommend here is using something that is actually going to clear adds fast. I have a video where I talk about this build that I absolutely love in Destiny, and this and this encounter really is no different. You're going to want to use a build very similar to the one that I used. You're going to want to use as many things to benefit your game as possible, and Oppressive Darkness is super nice for this. You're just going to want to be able to use stuff to clear ads fast, guys. I don't know how else to say it. So once all of that is done, congratulations, you have got your triumph, you have got your extra chest that is probably going to be the same exact drop that you got out of the first chest, trust me, that happens a lot. And you probably got some XP as well. Now if you did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription, I know. I'm that guy who's asking for likes and subs, I'm sorry. But if you guys do want to say hi, have any questions, comments, concerns, you're always free to check me out on Twitch. Link will be in the description of my Twitch channel. I wanna say thank you so much. Literally, as I'm making this video, we hit 6,000 subscribers. That is wild. That is wild. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. It's gonna be a good one, hopefully, and goodbye.